This afternoon, a compact Pacific system rolls through Texas, producing numerous showers and thunderstorms through the Lone Star State. We might as well take it back to yesterday and look at the radar, and we're going to watch the Four Corners area. If we check that out, we can see a upper air system moving through that region. High-based showers in the Albuquerque and Santa Fe area yesterday evening. And then as that hooks up with the moisture in Texas, deep convection breaks out along the cap rock. And this is what it looked like overnight. By dawn, pretty good squall line from San Antonio up to Dallas. And that brings us up to the current time. Numerous showers and storms through East Texas, the Red River region, and even some cold core activity back near Abilene. Here's what the surface map looks like this afternoon. A polar front wave in southeast Texas. Got the cold air advection right there on the west side. And strong warm air advection supporting the system. The warm conveyor belt feeding north. And the cold conveyor belt wrapping around into the Abilene area. And in between, a little dry slot. We can check that out on the satellite well, we can definitely pick that out on the water vapor imagery. The yellow is the dry air feeding into the backside of the system, crossing over San Antonio, almost to Houston, and even feeding up towards Dallas. Now, that does not totally erode the clot field. Certainly, there's plenty of low stratus and stratocumulus there, but in the mid and upper levels, definite dry air. So using the high-resolution rapid refresh model, we bring up a sounding, and it's going to look kind of like this around Austin. There you go. Plenty of dry air in the mid and upper levels, very dry, up near 300 millibars, and still some trapped moisture down there below 850. Here's another way we can observe the system with surface data and a radar overlay. So if we want to find the warm sector, we've got to go all the way down to the Texas Gulf Coast. And there we see 75 over 75 at Galveston. I think that's a 70. No, I think that's a 71 degree dew point. And 71 over 66 at Beaumont. And probably that consists of part of the tropical air. So if I was going to draw the fronts, I might be looking at something like this. And... The warm front, kind of like that. That's just preliminary. I haven't really looked too much at this data, but going up further north, I can see we get into the mid-60s around Louisiana. And maybe, yeah, mid-60s. And this air right here, that's going to be worked over from rain, so we're not going to really pay too much attention to the thermal properties. Very likely, we've got an occlusion extending north, somewhat like that. Again, not really too sure where that's at, but that's going to be modulated somewhat by convective outflow. You can see that coming out from these convective elements up to the northeast. And on the other side, there's the cold air advection sweeping right through San Antonio and the hill country. And then further up north, we get into some of the cooler air, 50s, in the Ranger Palo Pinto area. Uh, it's off the top of the screen. See if we can move that a little bit further north. Well, that'll have to do, but, you know, I don't really see a surface low in that area. The deepest surface low that we do find is Barra Clinic in nature, located right around here. That's going to be near the frontal systems and then sort of a inverted trough extending up to the north. Of course, not everybody is in Texas and... We need to take a look at the national view and look a little bit more at the dynamics. So we're going to switch over to the national GFS sequence here. And what we see is kind of an open trough. Well, we do know that there is closed low right there. The GFS model not really picking that out all that great, but, you know, those are details. Okay, the low right there, the cold front extending southwest and the warm front extending east. And then we got that inverted trough extending northward, maybe an occlusion, and then the cold low right there over the Mineral Wells area. So that's starting out the sequence this evening. You can see lots of ridging in the northeastern U.S. 
extending all the way into the Great Plains and the southeastern U.S. So that's going to feed cool, dry air into the system, and that's really not a great thing for dynamic support. It lacks latent heat. Evaporative processes tend to chill the air, and there's just kind of a lot of factors that tend to result in weakening of systems like this. So we'll bring that forward there and go into the overnight hours into tomorrow. And indeed, there is weakening. This is going to be Sunday morning. So that system slowly pulling up to the northeast. And a rather weak pressure gradient across much of the eastern U.S. In fact, up to the north, troughing in Canada. That's not very favorable for pushing cold air out of Canada. We want to see high pressure building there. And of course, that will move into the U.S., we don't have that. We've got kind of a zonal flow, the jet running like that, lee side troughing in Alberta, and just a series of cyclones kind of off the map there, moving west to east. So the next big change is going to come from the Pacific. So we're talking about this area here, front moving into Washington and Oregon on Monday. This is going to be the Monday map. Let's see how that progresses kind of a repeat of Wednesday. So we come back to next Wednesday and kind of a very similar picture to what we had back then. Cold front moving into Salt Lake City into central Nevada and the fronts looking about like that. So change is going to come from the West. And one factor that we do depend on is moisture return. And I think this time we're going to have a more generous return of moisture. Let me bring up the dew points. Hopefully this doesn't get too messy. You don't have to really look at the lines. You can just kind of pick out the values, like 55 there around Wichita Falls. You're going to see those come up in Texas, in Oklahoma, and Kansas as that system approaches from the west. All right, so let's get that centered and run that forward. Up, oh, we've got... 60s starting to nose up into Texas. There they are up in Oklahoma by Thursday next week. The Pacific system still hanging back, allowing time for that moisture return to set up. And already I can see evidence of a dry line. That's going to be kind of in this area right there. So dry line fronts. Not sure exactly where that's going to be. Probably somewhere right in there, Four Corners area. And there you go. So later next week is going to be interesting. So eventually this mess comes together. That's going to be about Saturday. So there's Saturday morning. We start out with a warm front there in Oklahoma. Cold front extending south. It looks like the dry line has been swallowed up. And 65 to 70 dew points through this entire area. Now as that wave gets picked up and lifted up in Oklahoma, we will probably see a squall line develop. There you go. That's going to be overnight Saturday into Sunday next week, the 5th into the 6th. And that could be something to watch. 65 degree dew point, strong dynamics, the jet stream, if you look at the red lines, that's going to be your thickness pattern, and that's going to sort of approximate the upper air flow. So that's going to be the jet right there, sort of a split flow pattern, but certainly enough dynamics to support a strongly sheared environment and maybe even a bit of severe weather. But this is pretty far out, 210 hours, so we don't need to really sweat over this. Well, Big Rig Steve was one of my favorite places to get good shots of the sky. Not really seeing that here. Clear skies around the Chicago area, Bolingbrook. That's the name of a prison out of Grand Theft Auto. And he's going to be in this area somewhere in there. Temperatures near 60, definitely under the influence of that ridge. You can see the high pressure in the northeastern part of the chart 
and just clear skies all the way down from the Great Lakes into the Midwest. And more importantly, notice the low dew points. Those are in the low to mid 30s. And those dew points can give you very important information on the source region of your air mass. So this is clearly from the Great Lakes or Ontario or further up north. And this shows you what I'm talking about. Source regions up there in the Arctic, dew points down to minus 10 to minus 20. Meanwhile, the tropics, dew points all the way up into the 70s. So this forms a sort of tracer that you can use to find out where the air masses are coming from. And you can see one little nose right there into the southeastern U.S., 60s dew points into Georgia. And as we get the next wave coming in from the Pacific, you're going to see another surge come up through Texas. That's that same one we looked at next week. There it is, 60s and 70s heading up north and interacting with that frontal zone. So here you go. This is going to be Saturday going into Sunday next weekend. And you'll notice up there in the northern plains, the dry air, well, that's kind of hanging up there in British Columbia and Yukon, so probably very cold in that region, but you can see it's not really expanding down to the south. So even without looking at your temperature charts, we can guess that there's probably not much polar air on its way into the country. Here's the temperature anomaly for the 5th and 6th of November. Definitely cold up there in Yukon and Alaska. And we can see it spreads down into maybe Montana, but just not really much push on that. A lot could change between now and then, but that's really too far out. And that will do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining. We'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. And we may try to work in an extra episode at some point over the next week, maybe. Anyway, hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.